was the battle rhyme a real thing? Because I know it wasn't in Compton. That was that was fake in in L A for sure, right? Battle rhyme was real as a son of a bitch. Okay, they were towed around on a trailer, taking it around the corner, man. And uh, uh, dude, just real talk. They have no. I've seen it. I just it's crazy I, to hear somebody who actually saw it. Dude, that's, it had a big ass plate on the front of it, and that's tough because back then, dope dealers was dope dealers was way ahead of the game. You know, uh, they knew how to get rid of the dope before the cops get in the house. And because mm. they, they guys would build a fortress. My buddy, he was uh, he was an iron dude. He would build a dude a fortress. So you might have a f- regular wooden front door, but you got a cage, just like in the bank or something. You got a cage it. to get into the house. So you can open the Damn. door, let a cat in, close the door behind him, serve him. He go back out. And the cops had to get in there. Just all these bars and cages. So. They they wouldn't even go to the bar. They go to the side of the house. Forget it. They go through the side of the house. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of t- a couple times, uh, either they almost killed some babies or hurt some babies, and that's what made the battle ram really really bad. Because some people would sometimes put up, set up shop in the house they they wouldn't even rent, or the owner would be absent, and you know somebody would uh mm. just take over a vacant property. All of a sudden, you come in, the side of your wall is gone. Yeah, and oops, my bad. Yeah, and then or they come to the wrong address. Okay, they yeah, that too. That. Yeah, they were notorious to come to the to the wrong address. Okay, oh, hmm. sorry, you know, it takes about six months. I got the big ass air conditioned window spot in the house, <laughs> furniture tow up, fish tank blow, fish on the on the ground flopping around, and uh, you have my oops. Okay, they were notorious for that. So, and uh, so that was Daryl Gates, and at some point in time. They uh banned the bat uh banned the battle ramp. Then they started using them um those uh big trucks with the hooks and snatch the bars off the window. Okay. Oh, okay. And depending on how good those was, they could snatch a good a good chunk of your uh wall off too. So it, it was it was no joke, Doc. It was no joke. Damn. Well, I, I think we all know the answer, but I would love to hear you kind of explain it a little bit. Why uh why do you think they went after crack cocaine so hard? Man, because crack cocaine, because they, they crack cocaine, they had uh, mandatory sentences at one point in time for crack cocaine, and that was predominantly uh, the hustle of black young black America. Okay, crack cocaine. I mean, powder cocaine. Powder cocaine got you rehab. Crack cocaine got you fifteen years. Okay, so you telling me if I got water, I go home. If I got ice, I got go. <laughs> Same, exactly. same, analogy. same shit. Same shit. Water, water. I get to go home. Ice. I got to go to jail. That's stupid, man. Okay, that don't make no sense. And that's yeah. that was something that Bill Clinton did. Then they implemented the three strikes law behind that. Then they implemented another uh, mandatory. Um, then, then they start having mandatory sentencing. This is all while they right after they uh, had had a uh, legal had, um. In, in the um, instituted um, privatized prisons, so now you got cats. They took all the jobs out of the hood in the in the late eighties, because back in the day you could get a job at the post office, Goodyear, GM, right here in the hood. Leave your job, mm-hmm. leave your school in high school. Yeah. Back then in high school, they gave you enough trade skills. You could leave high school in June, be working in July, and retire thirty years later. Yep. That's that's how it was, okay. And then all them jobs that was here in America ended up going overseas. So you got a bunch of folks over here ain't making no money. All of a sudden, here come this crack thing, and you got folks trying to eat. And it seemed it was a good hustle. Anybody watch anybody watch Snowfall? See how kind of money you was making, but it came with a price, okay. Yeah, with some destruction and a lot of violence, okay. And that just gave them cowboys. Um, cowboy, them cowboy cops, something to do, and just get put them on another level, man. It's, it just made them, oh shit, we can chase these cats down, and and then they got to keep some of the money. They had this forfeiture law; they was keeping the money. So when you, you know, dude, I mean, then you had guys like what's his name, Ramirez, that one that that uh, Richard Ramirez. No, no, the guy out of uh, oh, the the cop, the cop. He yeah, was, yeah, yeah, the bad cop. He was selling, he was taking dope and selling dope. Yep. He was taking yep. dope, dope dealers and selling it back to him. Okay, you yep. got you got people like the like like Snowfall man. CIA was bringing the shit in. Okay, then they bust the fool that was selling it. 
it was a cold game, man. It was a cold game. So yeah, and and Hollywood still was sniffing their cocaine. He's Hollywood, mm-hmm. Hollywood they never missed a line. They ain't never yep. missed a line of cocaine. You know, and that that shows you some straight that's <coughs> racism. That's blatant racism because they know that crack cocaine because powder cocaine did not take off big in the hood. Too expensive once again, and too yeah, expensive, too expensive. And I remember one night I had some of that shit. I stuck it in my sock. Guess what happened? It that dissolved shit. or some shit. Stopped it. The shit melted. Oh. Man. Oh hell no. I put it in my sock. It wouldn't nasty a couple of times. Go go ready to open it up and the shit was gone. Damn. It was some 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 milky white fluid in my goddamn pack. I was mad in the sun bitch. She <laughs> cost me $50. God, so yeah, Rampart Division. That's my man. Thank Rampart. You. There you go. Rampart, yeah. So yeah, this is what you're dealing with. So and it looked too much like heroin. And heroin, and heroin they say it was around. But I never, I've never known anybody deal with heroin. Mm. Heroin was one of them drugs that like, she, I, uh, needle, niggas, don't, niggas don't like going to the doctor and get, yeah. that, mm. get, their, uh, get their inoculation shots. Not yeah. long. I'm going to do it myself. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. Hell nah. Ah, I got to trust your ass. You shake it and shit. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. So if, it, if you couldn't smoke it, or you couldn't smoke it, niggas didn't want to mess with it. And that's and powder cocaine, like I said, it was around. It, you know, understand the economics of powder cocaine. Superfly, the movie, okay, mm-hmm. with the old movie. When Preach preached when he got the game, he was gonna flip a hundred keys, I think it was, at uh at three hundred thousand dollars. That was gonna be his retirement. Okay, that was it was thirty thousand a key back then. Okay, so who had thirty grand in the hood to just sell? You know, you had to be on. You had to be in the player. Yeah, you, you had to be have a, had that clientele. It's like mm-hmm. your only your only clientele is buying Jordans, but niggas is wearing kids. But all, your only clientele is jo- for Jordans. If he ain't right. got fifty dollars for a pair of shoes, he got to go barefoot. That's pretty much the analogy. So it was either cocaine or weed, and that's what everybody chose weed. One of my homies, um, uh, one of my homies was one of the, probably one of the biggest weed dealers. He made Nino Brown look like he was selling Girl Scout cookies when he came to weed. This dude was notorious. He he was he he had the the, the coldest game in the city, and uh, only thing got him was crack cocaine. Mm. Yeah, I want to uh, wrap it up nicely with this last question in regards to. Um, crack cocaine, because you said something back in the past that was very interesting. You said we should get reparations for what they did to us during that time. Yes, I do believe we should get reparations for that time. That, that, true enough, yes, 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 yes. Everything that happened to us over the last 400 years from the time they brought us over from Jonestown, wherever it was, that we touched down here in, 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 in these... Uh, in the stolen country called the United States of America. Uh, yes, they owe us for that, for building the Capitol building, for building the, the wealth of the generations. But in in the in the in the in the eighties, they consciously, consciously inf- uh, infested our communities with a drug that was designed to destroy the communities, meanwhile, hunted everybody that sold the drug. We didn't go looking for crack cocaine. We didn't go looking for crack cocaine. We was not trying to experiment, trying to find crack cocaine. They brought it out. They found out, found the recipe, brought it here, introduced it to some people, and they they created the, the 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 scenario, the platform, and then here's the opportunity. Then there's 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 multiple uh, hood stories about trucks of guns and trucks of bullets being left in trains and trucks and, and guns. And so you did this to us. You put us in a situation where we were, because we were okay. In the early 80s, it was a good time, man. It was a cool time. Yeah. If somebody asked about that today in my other class, 80s, the early 80s, early mid 80s was a good time, man. You had people was getting a lot more conscious. I uh, hear that a lot. Public Enemy was, you know, they was the, the, the group of, the, of that era. You had Public Enemy, Poor Righteous Teachers, some other folks. Oh, you talking about the 90s? 
No. Oh, the 80s. Late, yes, the 80s, never mind. I'm tripping. 85, 86, 87. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. 80s, um, yeah. The 80s, you know, Brothers is on a different, on a different movement. And um, it's like somebody said, oh, here they come. The niggas, let me throw this at their ass. And they hit us with that, you know, they hit us with the, uh, with the crack cocaine epidemic. And that was purposely, it was brought to our communities to destroy our communities. And once again, they found a way to get us to participate in our own self-destruction. And mm. that, I think, is um, a uh, ground for reparations. You know, they found, yeah. they found a way. To, I mean, understand this, dude. Every, every time you see a movie, black exploitation movie, okay, you see, we're taking it to the man. We're taking it to the man, okay? Because the man mm-hmm. back then was always white. Mm-hmm. The white, the man was always white, okay? And the hero always looked looked to fight the man. But the man was like, you know what? Forget that. I'm going to put somebody in front of me and let him be black. And that way, they won't be so suspicious of him. And if he's making money, they'll want to be on his team as opposed to shutting him down. And that's what happened. Mm. Everybody ended up on everybody ended up on the team trying to get some money, okay? And in the Reagan era, the Reagan era was not about your brother's keeper; it was about getting all you could, okay? Like Nino Brown said in uh, mm. Jack City, "We in the Reagan, you got to steal to get rich in the Reagan era, okay?" And that's what we were dealing with. We were dealing with the Reagan era, and Reagan came in; he started, he started killing everything. That's when they started killing the, the unions. They started killing off all kind of stuff. They uh, that's what he, uh, I remember in the 80s, that's when they, uh, when he was in the office, that's when they killed the, um, had the um, air traffic controller strike, okay? Okay. Uh, trying to break, trying to break all the unions down. Then they had the, uh, up until then, the corporate tax was like, corporate tax was like, one point was like 90%. Think, look it up. Corporate tax was like, uh, was like 90% which means it was more advantageous for the corporation to put money back into the business than to pay tax on the money, okay? Then he dropped it to 15%, and everybody started pulling money out. They started playing stock games, whatever the case may be. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a lot different time, and everybody was trying to – everybody was – it was not for everybody, but the hood especially felt different. I mean, because I know I, I, I was in the 80s. I was doing great, Okay. That was doing. I mean, you know, you, you, the music was good. You had Rick James, you had Prince, you had Michael, and you know, we was also. Yep. It, you had a variety of stuff. You had hip hop was still fun. It hadn't gotten violent yet. Then they turned everything that we had that was going good for us. They found a way to turn it against us, and they and they found they got they got us to do it to ourselves, and that's mm. the part that nobody nobody saw coming. You know, even right now they found a way to get us to uh, degrade ourselves. And because certain people making money, people will defend that. All, leave that girls alone. They making money. Okay. They making money for their kids to go to private school. Meanwhile, your kids on, on the schoolyard in Compton, it's working. Okay. How's that working out for us? Okay. Mm. So how's that working out for us? So, you know, if, you know, when you sit here and you, and you watch and you listen and you, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of active in, in um, politics from different levels. I listen to a lot of politics. I listen to a lot of uh, talk radio, especially black talk radio, but also compared to my own, my own personal experiences. And I've realized that if um, certain people weren't black, the whole country would probably come down on them or they're not perceived as black. But if they, because they black, you know, oh, they just making money. They just getting paid. How you gonna hate on somebody getting paid? Because all money ain't good money. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's something we never understood. Some of us don't understand. Most of us, some of us don't. As long as they're getting paid for it, I don't care. Well, the devil the, the devil is hiring every day. The man is hiring every day. And if, if, if your soul is to fail, hey, here's a receipt for your ass. Mm-hmm. 